success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to grow with team lead of the Enriquez Group, Realtor Vinny. Hi, you Road Truth listeners. Today I have Carl. He is the founder of Abundant. I guess the simplest way of thinking about it is he helps uh, individuals that are building a business get to the next level uh, and leveraging technology. Is that kind of a rough way of putting it, Carl? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, we leverage, uh, you know, our software, um, behavioral stuff. It's a lot about management. So we, we try and bring a holistic viewpoint to the to the uh, opportunity to help companies. So, so, so there's there's a a coaching aspect to it too. Then, yes, yes, Abundant can provide the the coaching, but we also work with uh, a lot of other coaches, consultants, business advisors. So, you know, it's about you know, in order to make that transformation, you mentioned that it's you know, it's changing behaviors, and some of those behaviors are for the you know the business founder owner that's trying to take it to that next level. Hmm. Well, I mean, how would you describe it? I guess, I guess the easiest to describe if you're an elevator, someone goes, Hey, Carl, what do you do? How would yeah. you describe it as your elevator pitch? Right. We help companies put, well, we help companies handle rapid growth by building a management infrastructure. So we do that. So they keep, they avoid breaking all the parts of their business have you always like a, a young carl was he into uh systems just being building stuff creative i mean who was a young carl right um yeah i remember i was uh i don't know probably 20 or something and i remember telling my dad you know you know i want to you know manage companies that's really what i think is really cool and he's like you know, oh, you can't do that. You know, every company's different. You have to, you know, know that business to manage it. And I was kind of like taken aback. And um, yeah, I studied economics undergrad and information systems in my MBA and, you know, did the corporate work world for a while. But yeah, systems and how to manage things and systems for managing things has always been in my head. What did your, I mean, what did your father do? Uh, sales. He has sold industrial valves. He's uh, he's 84 and actually still selling them. So yeah. Where do you think the 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 mindset of managing businesses came from? Was it just was it? Did you actually know that what that entailed, or was it more of just it sounds like a fun thing to do? Um, I really think that it was something that I'd kind of seen had some exposure to both my grandfathers had started businesses um, with, you know, mixed results. Um, I guess I, my first job was at age 10. And so by the time I was 20, I'd had, you know, I don't know, three or four or five jobs. So I'd seen different, you know, management styles and also been exposed to some, to, well, one uh, kind of, friend of the family, if you will, had become extremely successful. Um, you know, my grandfather had helped him start his business many, many years ago, lend him some money. And um, by the time I was, you know, a teenager, you know, he was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So, um, and, you know, it actually was, you know, brought to my attention when we got to fly on his corporate jet. He had, uh, he flew my grandfather and the, my aunts and uncles and his cousins down to Florida for a trip to Disney World. And I'm like, why are we flying on a private jet? What the heck's going on here? <laughs> and it really highlighted to me that, you know, my grandfather had started businesses and, you know, he did fine, he did well. But, you know, this other guy did like, wow. And it was like, wow, what's the difference going on there? And that really got me reading, you know, biographies of, you know, these business leaders and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I was fascinated with how, how you do that. And he'd run a number of different businesses, owned a number of di different businesses. In different do, you, do you remember at that time what you thought the difference was from your grandfather, from this gentleman? 
So, yeah, you mentioned early on systems. So, you know, I, I kind of had a sense that, you know, systems were, you know, a significant part of that. So that influenced me studying systems in you know, my MBA. And a lot of my work was in systems, picked up a lot of, you know, finance and accounting early on as well. And gradually, you know, as my experience went on, tried different things, you know, it's like, yep, yeah, you need systems, you need finance, you need accounting, you absolutely need sales. But this management thing, you know, how do we manage people really came up again and again. It's like spent a lot of time learning that. You know, one uh, one specific thing in my MBA course, this was back in the 80s. Um, you know, we had an industrial organizational psychology course. And on the first day of class, the, you know, I was all excited. This could be really interesting. You know, how do we manage people? How do, you know, and the first day of class, the professor's like, you know, we, we've learned a lot over the years in this field, but what we've learned is really descriptive. We can describe what's happening, but we really don't have a lot to say about what we should do. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> That doesn't sound very impressive here. It's not going to help me uh, that much going forward. So I remember that. Um, before we get back to your story, um, so we, we don't get it a lot, but sometimes we'll get live questions. So a question about basically your company, mm -hmm. is there a, a virtual assistant aspect to um, the assistance that you offer to companies growth? Um. Kind of, sort of, you know, there's a lot of training. There's, uh, we've got our training team that'll help companies get set up and answer questions. You know, how to use the software specifically in your situation. You know, every company's different. So there's, you know, some help and support and guidance, live support and guidance that we, we typically do for companies. Is that kind of what my, my guess is they're maybe talking about overseas. That's my guess, a virtual assistance overseas. Um, well, we're a virtual company, and so we, we do have resources overseas, but okay. it's it's not really, you know, uh, focused on, you know, hey, can you do a certain task for us? But, you know, we have done that in the past. We, you know, we've had companies say, hey, I, I need help with my social posts. And I was like, yeah, we've got some, you know, folks overseas that can help you with that and okay. do that. So, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for that question. Um, all right. So going back to, uh, to your journey, so you're in college, you're getting a better idea. You're getting the education, everything. You still have this goal of running companies. So what happens next after, uh, you graduate from college? So graduate, you know, I went straight through with my MBA and came out and I was in Houston, Texas, oil capital of, of the world at that time. And um, we were in a big oil and gas downturn. And so there weren't a huge amount of um, first job opportunities out there. So I, I went with a consulting firm, uh, thought that'd be a great way to get experience with see different uh, perspectives, different companies. So that's where I started. So you're at, you're at the consulting firm. What are things that you learned at the consulting firm that maybe weren't necessarily things you picked up or knew in college. Right. There were definitely, definitely some good lessons there. You know, um, you know, one was how resources were allocated in, you know, the consulting firm and, you know, which partner had projects really determined everything. So that was um, an interesting thing. I, I was certainly interested in what, one partner who kind of did general business consulting was doing, I got some small projects with him, but the uh, mortgage banking group had these, you know, big projects. And so I got pulled into that and that's, uh, that's where I really spent most of my time. So that was interesting. So do you mean like more of like the politics of, of business kind of like who, who you got to be around to get the better projects? Well, a, a bit of that, but, even more than that, just, you know, how do we allocate resources at a firm? You know, it's not, you know, well, you've got this tag on you and, you know, while you'd be good for that, it's a lot less of, you know, what you'd be great at and what you want to do is a lot more of, 
this is what we got right now. Do you want it or not? You know, mm. <laughs> and if you don't want it, well, you know, tough luck. Um, that's where you're going. So that, you know, it was a little different perspective on, you know, allocating, you know, who gets to do what, you know, in school, it's always, well, this is what I want to study and this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm majoring in. Now it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. Here, your warm body, go here. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> Be ready for the opportunities. Now you're, you're kind of going, gaining information in the consulting company. And then there was a time when you transitioned back to, to your family's business, correct? Yeah, actually, I got hired away by a client. I was on a project for months and months, and they got to know me, and they said, hey, we're growing. And so they hired me away. So that was a bank, which eventually became part of Chase Bank. Mm -hmm. um, and so worked in, in that sector and you know some interesting finance and systems. And the group I was in, I started, I was like, number 22 in that person number 22 in that group and three and a half years later we had um let's see we had over 350 people in the group <clears throat> so it was uh some amazing growth and um you know a lot of change so it was some <clears throat> some good learning in that situation but yeah and so i'd done that for a while and that's when my parents you know, their business was was growing a little bit. And so they kind of twisted my arm until I said, hey, let's join, you know, time to join the family company. So I did that. Now, what's what did you learn from the dynamics of working with family compared to working with, you know, at that time, strangers or friends and not, a little bit different, I guess, of a dynamic? Yeah, quite a bit different. You know, there's a, a lot of pressure that comes working in a corporate environment, it certainly can be and you know hey you need this deadline meet the deadline but it was pretty much you know about the goals of the of the firm it wasn't about you know do i like you are you related to me or you know less about the opinion of that person in the situations that i was in and then i came to the family business and it was like you know you know if my mom was focused on this thing, then that was the thing, you know, and it wasn't about, you know, it was a lot, I found there was a lot more emphasis on loyalty to the person mm -hmm. as opposed to getting, you know, this is a task we need done, get it done. It was about, you know, you need to be loyal to me. It was like different mindset, different mindset, um, you know, different ways to do things. So, in, in now, how did you adapt to this mindset? Um, you know, it it was a it was a there was a lot of changes. There were definitely a lot of changes in the perspective of what I was doing. You know, there was less uh, support staff. There's a lot more hands on doing it. Um, you know, the the perspective was also different you know in this organ you know i was in an organization we the group i was in you know we had a few hundred people but it was part of a much larger organization with you know perspectives on finance and hiring and process and hr procedure you know, all these different kind of infrastructure that went with it and then you go to a company with you know 25 people in the whole company and no hr you're you are, you know, I was HR, I was finance, I was systems, you know, I was accounting, I was everything but sales and warehousing, you know, <laughs> it's like that, you know, brought a completely different, you know, perspective, Ma you know, the management was, you know, well, there's my mom, there's my dad, and that's your management team. And so, okay, that's, that's what it is. Um, so yeah, just so many things changed, um, you know, and the, the company, you know, my family's company was growing. We grew, um, you know, five X in three years. So we, we grew pretty well, um, you know, but very different perspectives on how do you finance that? You know, how, uh, do we do deal with, you know, personnel issues, all sorts of things were very different. Now you said there there was a lot of change, a lot of growth that happened in there. How much of because, I mean, 
people listening right now, and I've had other people on the, the podcast have talked about this, where sometimes when you're with your friends or family that you grew up with, you could leave 10 years, 15 years, and when you come back with them, they might perceive you in the same light they saw you that was 10, 15 years ago. So you don't maybe you don't get the same level of respect, same level of of um, acknowledgement to things you've accomplished. So mm-hmm. in that dynamic, were you were they allowing you to grow and allowing you to make changes to the the business? That's a real good question. Real good question. Yeah, you know, in corporate, I had been you know the expert in a particular part of the business and. You know, when questions came up, you know, they'd say, Carl, what's your question? You know, what do you think about this? What should we do about this? Here, it was more of, you know, this is, these are the, you know, this is how I want it done. Do it. And there was a lot of resistance. I made suggestions about, you know, how do we finance things? How do we manage growth? How do we manage people? And... I really didn't get a lot of uh, agreement on those suggestions. So (laughs) it was, and, you know, we also, and just kind of the perspectives on growth and where the company's going, we grew very rapidly for three years. And then basically my dad said, that's great. I don't want to grow anymore. Oh. And so there was a couple more years that, you know, we had discussions around that. And he never changed his mind. And so at that point, he said, well, you know, this isn't, you know, meeting my needs for, for you know, my goals and objectives and growth. So that's when I did move on. What did that move on look like? What was that transition look like for you? So I did find a job in corporate. I uh, was working on... Uh, acquiring i was working with a smaller bank than the one the first one i was with but I was doing bank acquisition so i was going out and finding opportunities com- banks that might be good acquisition targets doing analysis communicating to those banks and say hey we're interested in acquiring you crafting office offers for the bank working with the you know, president and cfo of the of the bank to you know you know, get approval and make strategic decisions on that. And we eventually did acquire um, an, another bank. And so you know, some interesting projects there. So you're at the at that bank. What happens next? So the, you know, the whole idea was we're going to use our stock, which, at the, you know, when I started there, the stock was pretty high and we were able to buy other banks with our stock. And so it was a good deal. We could buy their earnings at a low price relative to our stock price. And so it would help our earnings per share. I was like, fantastic. And then our stock price dropped as we were finishing up that first transaction. And they're like, well, that makes sense to do acquisitions anymore. So that was like, okay, time to look for the next opportunity. And at that time it was the dot com boom, and so I jumped out and used my, you know my systems background and my experience working with my family's company and started a B two B marketplace. That was a great learning experience, but in the end it really was not very successful. You know the second round of funding was scheduled for the month after the dot com crashed. So that didn't work out so well. Um, never got that round of financing. And shortly after that, shut down the, the company. All right. So let me recap. So you're, you were at your family's business, not really getting a say, not kind of told, hey, you have to stop your growth. Go to another company. They let you go. Now you start your own company and it's not going that great because the dot com. I mean, I would think at this time you might be feeling a little deflated. Yeah, yeah, there there was a kind of that kick in the gut type of feeling at that point. It's like, what are we going to do here? And so I started doing, you know, consulting, you know, dot com crash economy wasn't booming. There weren't jobs everywhere. So I was doing consulting and helping some people and actually helped a consultant 
with some spreadsheets uh, for his consulting business. He was trying to gather data from all these hospitals he's working with. And an offhand comment, I said, you know, if you, you know, if we had this data collection on the web, you know, we wouldn't have the complexity of the different versions of the spreadsheets, just make it simpler. He's like, we can do that. And so I put my programmer hat on and started writing code to make it easier to do that. And so just transitioned into the, the next thing. And that was uh, the next software startup. And, and how does that one progress? What And what are some of the things you learned from the first startup that maybe you changed in the second startup? So we, on the first one, it was, you know, this uh, marketplace where you had to kind of bring both sides of the transaction together before it really made sense for either. And so there was a huge startup cost and all the upsides way in the future. So this was much more of supporting a consulting business and we could sell, you know, for cash, uh, the analytics and that came out of that data back to these hospitals, you know, it was so a lot more, you know, cash flow oriented, not the kind of dot com, you know, we're gonna sell a billion pet food, you know, subscriptions or whatever. So that was certainly one one learn lesson learned there. And this company, this second company, it sounds like it has some similarities to your current uh, company, Abundant. Uh, not I mean not at the same level. Yet it seems like there's some similarities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. There's, um, you know, definitely similarities and differences, but yeah, a, a lot of similarities. So, yeah. And now you're, you're on the path. You, you, why do you not convert the, I guess the, the second company into abundant or expand off abundant? I mean, what was the idea? Cause you end up selling that company. Um, I sold yeah. my piece of it to, uh, yeah to my partner and you know we went our our separate ways we had different but one of the lessons i learned out of that is we had very different visions on you know how to grow a company you know he just kept believing that there was going to be this viral moment when everybody in the industry started signing up and you know we could do it for this low low cost because we we're going to have a billion units mm. of the software sold and, you know, I kept telling them that that sounds great, but, you know, I tried that last time and it didn't work. You know, we're going to have to price it a little higher and, you know, actually, you know, sell it. And so we got to build that in and, you know, we just never saw it the same way. So that's when, you know, I agreed to take a buyout and, and go on and move on to the to the next thing. Now with Abundant, did you bring a partner off for that one, that company? I did not, did not thought about it, but didn't really have a partner identified that, you know, I thought, you know, had the, you know, enthusiasm for what I was doing to really, um, you know, you know, share that vision and, and avoid the problems that I'd seen in that earlier startup. So, yeah. Is there, I mean... So you joined your family's company and from there, it didn't really kind of work out. You started a, a startup with a partner and the kind of, it, it didn't go forward. And then you started your own company. That's, that's booming. Is there anything that you could have done? You think from the knowledge you've gained now, or maybe someone listening, right. That you could help them out. That's thinking of starting a business with a partner, with a family member. Is there anything you would lay out now with all the knowledge you've gained that might get you farther along? Well, one of the first things that I've advised a number of companies that have been starting up and particularly can think of one that started with a partnership. And I was like, okay, if you're partners, that's fantastic. You know, you've, you've got some vision of how this is all going to grow and that's fantastic, but make sure you plan out how you're going to break up. Mm. You know, there's always a chance, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but there's always the chance that you're going to see something different. One of you is going to have a situation change. I've, I was working at one point with a, a 
partners and they'd worked together for many years, but one of them got sick. So the medical situation put a lot of stress on the priorities. And so they, you know, were, were just going at it, trying to figure out how to deal with it. A lot of friction at that point. So how do you break up is, is a question you need to answer, you know, and you know, that's not the fun exciting hey we're getting started and we're gonna do great how are we gonna break up it's like <laughs> that's it's not what people want to hear when they're all excited about their new idea but it's one that my experience is really important because if you're unless you're going to be doing that until you both die that's a real question oh well, and yeah you got to plan for the worst and and, and kind of hope for the best i mean what are some things that you've learned in your third business or i guess yeah, third business that you wish you knew before that for yourself. Well, probably uh, probably a lot of things, but <laughs> the, <laughs> um, you know, when you you know starting up, everything takes longer than you expect. So mm -hmm. you know, kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Cash flow is king. If you can, as long as you can get enough cash flow to stay in the game, then you've got a chance of winning. It's when you run out of cash that everything obviously stops. I mean, that seems so straightforward and obvious to say that, but I mean, I, I've I've had people from like top business schools, you know, years of experience in business, and come to me and say, hey, "I got this great idea." And, you know, I've, I've built it all out. It's working. And all I need is, you know, whatever, a million dollars in investment. It's like, great. Sounds like a great idea. I love the product. Fantastic. You know, okay, we're going to go raise the money. You know, how long, you know, how long can you, you know, keep going? You've got some savings, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got like 90 days worth of savings. And it's like, no, no. <laughs> You know, if you're going to go raise money, you know, think a year, not a couple months, few months, you know, it just the paperwork of signing, you know, negotiating agreements and getting things signed. You know, if you've if you've gotten a you know, handshake with the investor, it still takes 60 to 90 days to get that all done. And so keep, you know, keep cash flow keep your cash flow, you know, that's really, really important. So would you suggest to people that if, if they don't have currently a, a one year of um, reserves ready to go that to keep like a day job until they actually have that, if they want to start their company now or. Every company's a little different. You know, if you're, if you're starting a, you know, t-shirt, you know, stand or, you know, something that immediate, you know, as soon as you set up shop, people are going to start buying and you get some cash flow. That's different than if you're, you know, starting a manufacturing company, you know, where you've got to, you know, get the machines installed and test, and then you got to go out and sell, you know, so every company's different, but yes, you make sure you've got enough to, you know, if you say it's going to take six months, you better have more than six months worth of cash because it always takes longer. You know, yeah. In that case, maybe you do need nine months or a year's worth of you know living expenses before you jump out. And nowadays there's so many kind of side hustles, if you will, so many ways to start a business without quitting your day job. Or um, I was talking, see, just a couple of days ago, I was talking to an entrepreneur. And she's got really good idea, you know, getting a lot of momentum with it, but it's going to take a while before it's really cash flowing. So her solution was not to quit her day job, but to kind of find a way to negotiate down and just work part time. Hmm. So, you know, in this job, she was able to be very valuable to the company, even on a part time basis keep enough cash flow to, you know, just cover her overhead, you know, rent and food and that kind of stuff. 
and then that that gives her the flexibility to you know get the business rolling even if she doesn't know exactly how long it's going to take so that's if you can swing that you know that's a really good way to do it well talking about planning to the future where do you see yourself and your company going in the next five years Mm -hmm. so we're our our company we we've got a software tool that we use and we help companies directly but we also partner with business advisors of various kinds, coaches and consultants and um, strategy consultants, all sorts of business advisors to these lower middle market companies. So we want to keep adding more of those advisors who would use our software to help deliver their services. So that's where we want to keep growing. And, you know, we're really excited about helping companies that are in that lower middle market space to keep growing. I've seen over the years, so many different companies that I've met, worked with, talked to that have, you know, grown pretty quickly up to a certain point, kind of like my, my family's company, we grew to a certain point and it's like, then we leveled off. And sometimes that's by choice. It's like, Hey, you make enough money, you're living a nice lifestyle, nice house, nice car, it's all good. And that works for you. But I also know a lot of people, um, entrepreneur I talked to the other day, he's grown it to the point he's got 12 people and it's a solid business. You know, it's a seven figure business, but the way it's going right now, he's really not making a whole lot of money. He's scraping Mm -hmm. by but he knows he needs to take it to the next level so they can make the kind of money to really support his family, live the lifestyle that, you know, justifies the hours he's been putting in. And so helping those entrepreneurs take this, go to the next level, whether directly, you know, just with our, our software and our guidance or even better with our business our partners who are business advisors and coaches, you know, that's really satisfying to me and, you know, to people on our, our team. I mean, one of the toughest things, and I mean, again, I've had people on here um, talk about it is one of the toughest things is getting from one level to the next level. I mean, you'll talk to someone today that's saying, Hey, I'm in expansion mode. And you talk to them maybe in a couple of years from now and they go, Oh, what happened? Oh, I went back to where I was previously because the expansion level was a little too difficult. I think, we all get to that. It could be business. It could be, I mean, working out. It could be, I mean, buying a home. I mean, whatever it is, you get at a plateau and you need that that person guiding you to that next level and building that roadmap for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if someone's listening, and thank you again, Carl, for being here today. If someone's listening and they're looking to take themselves to the next level, what's the best way of them getting more information about you and your, your company? Easiest way would be, of course, go to our website, abundant.com and you know you learn a lot more there you know if you're uh want to get on social media we're on most of the social media linkedin twitter youtube facebook and you can you know learn more about abundant that way and my profile on linkedin of course and so those are great ways we've got a lot of resources in terms of you know videos and uh blogs and you know all sorts of information out there about you know how to grow your company to the next level issues that we've run into success stories and challenging stories so yeah that'd be some great ways to do it again uh thank you carl any last words that you want to to tell our listeners i mean maybe maybe a quick uh, uh a quick story of someone transitioning or anything else you want to tell our listeners you know, it's possible to go to that next level, you know, even if you do get stuck, um, had a company that had grown to a certain point, then they were stuck for three years in a row. You know, we were able to come in and, you know, give them some guidance, help them make a few changes, and they were able to double their sales in the next two years. We've uh, done that with a number of different companies. So that wasn't just a one-off experience, but, you know, there's a few key things you can learn 
and tools you can put in place and that can take you to the next level and you know who knows where you can go from there yeah definitely i mean it doesn't matter where you are today as long as you have a roadmap a game plan you can get to wherever you want to get to uh in the near future thank you guys for listening thank you uh carl for being here everyone please subscribe please share and go in the show notes uh find carl and find abundant thanks everyone